What's going on guys, Planet Drift 4 here, you to bring you guys a brand new video, and today we're here with Alan, and what did you do Alan? Um, I got top 4 at Locals with Unchained, I got 4th out of 23 people, it doesn't sound that great, but honestly I'm really happy with how I did, um, cause it's a pretty competitive Locals, it's that cool stuff, it was, I only played against Meta decks as well, it was 2 tiers, 1 sprite player, and an Exorcister player funnily enough, and All right, I, nice. that's actually kinda slept on. Okay, cool. So, so for the main deck, it was three copies of Unchained Twins Aruha. This card's amazing because it's one of the ways that you get your... It's one of your main starters. You use it to pop... If you pop any Unchained card with it, then you can use the Unchained card to summon an open deck, and then it's just full combo. You go from there. Um, three copies of Arkea. It's another starter, but it's not as good as Aruha because Aruha just specials itself, so you don't use your normal. But Arkea's still good. You can go normal Arkea, then you can pop a back row, and then go off from there. And it can be quite nice as well because you can use it to stop interaction from resolving because if you like have a second on chain muscle, let's, let's say you have Sarama out, then you can use its effect to pop the Sarama to dodge stuff like Imperm or Effect Villa or Chi Zhao, things like that. Then you play triple Sarama, Sarama's great. You play three of them because this is a very pure build. I know a lot of builds play two sometimes, but I prefer the third one because sometimes just having a name for the traps can be quite nice if you're in like a simple hard game state. And also in the grind game, it's amazing. You just like, it becomes a one card combo in the grind game. Cause you just like, once you get a trap or another unchained in graveyard, you just reset it with it, pop it, and then summon another one, you're off to the races. Then there's three copy of Abominable Unchained Soul. Soul is great because it lets you do a lot of silly things with this deck that would let you combo when you usually couldn't. Like if you have a single name and any of the level three names and this in hand, you can do stuff like crash the name into a monster in the opponent's turn, summon this from hand, and chain block it as well. So that way you can get another body on board, and it can come up a lot. Also, it's just nice having an on summon pop. It can come up by using the monster reborn trap to revive and then pop a card, or you do on res summon it, pop a card when your opponent doesn't expect it. It's really funny against access code because it's like, oh, on res, boom, the access code is gone. Then there is the brick. The blueberry flavored doggo right here. I hate and love this card. It's amazing when you can able when it's amazing when you're able to summon it without it being stuck in your hand because you can just use it to link summon with an opponent's card on your own turn. So in simplified games it becomes great. You summon it, link off whatever they had on board, and then you're just able to uh, just kind of like outgrind them at that point, and you can keep on bringing it back and looping it with a trap and stuff like Sarama set it, pop it, and use his graveyard effect, which just come up because you can. If you have a link in graveyard, you can summon this with Sarama, pop it, and then revive the link, which is great. So you don't have to always commit to the extra deck. And then hand traps, three Ash Blossom. Not amazing this format, but I feel it's still necessary to play against rogue decks and stuff. It can, if the opponent didn't open that well, and in conjunction with other hand traps, it comes really good. Also, it's all right in grind games. Triple DD Crow, I feel like this is mandatory because of Thralaman. Has some niche interactions against Sprite, the tri build sometimes. It's all right. And then two main deck Radiance. Mm, spicy. Radiance is actually great because you can recur it with the Unchained Link since it is a Fiend. And it makes going second way easier because you can Kaiju whatever like problematic monster the opponent has. It's really good against niche decks like Adding Mystery even because you just Kaiju their towers. Also just against the meta decks you Kaiju a boss monster and are able to like play from there. You can also like Kaiju something that would pop your Unchained or like get rid of the Unchained without popping it. Crash it into the crash the unchained into it and then summon from deck, so it's a way to secure summons. It's quite nice. Besides that, um, we also have the spell traps after that, so yeah. And for the spell traps, we start off with three copies of Abomination's Prison. This is the road of the deck. I really wish it was unchained Abomination. That'd be so insane. That would be really nice, but this is fine as is. Um, you can also set it in certain interactions to pop it with Aruha. So you go set, pop with Aruha, effect in graveyard to summon because it also has the graveyard summon effect. All the back row have effects when they're popped while face down. They can summon from deck, which is great. Besides that, triple extravagance. Extravagance is fine as a set because all you really need to play is a single like dog, and that's nice because it's just good to have the draw power and it makes like. It makes it so you don't have to risk banishing your main deck pieces to like have card advantages because this deck really likes having card advantage because it burns a lot sometimes and it needs to keep staying in the game for like for pitches for abominable unchained soul to pop and other things like that. Also it lets you commit more. So it's called by the grave, good against tier going first, besides that it hits hand traps, good card. And then for the trap cards, it's three copies of Escape of the Unchained. This card's really nice. Um, it's just spot removal, makes playing as mine and other floodgates way easier. 
like if you break it's fine even because you go normal summon and unchain set this and set some other stuff and it's fine because you still have interaction on opponent's turn and the unchain can summon something like abominable so this plus any unchained monster is two pops which is actually pretty nice then there's three copies of this this is a monster reborn this card is amazing as well because you can do stuff like um, if your opponent Dark Rollers you and you have both of these, it becomes even more nasty because you pop with a Dark Roller, recur something with the Blue Dog, and then you can Monster Reborn the Blue Dog. It's, just, it's a new instance of itself. You can use the Blue Dog's effect to leak summon. Really good. And then three Imperm, another Hand Trap. Pretty alright. The Column comes up, your opponent is bad. <laughs> it's a good card, honestly. I like it a lot. Um, and three Torrential Tribute. Torrential Tribute is amazing because you can break parity in this deck with it really easy. You plus off of it like it's nothing. Insane. And if you catch your opponent with it, well, it's if you like time it well enough against your opponent, it can make them scoop instantly. That's it for the main deck. And then we have the extra deck. We start off with three copies of Blue Boy, El Perrito. I love this card. It is amazing. It's an IP that XL Linkros on the opponent's turn using one of their monsters as special summon. And if it's popped, you get to recur any fiend from graveyard. This is how you back add back Radiant. You can take a lot of funny stuff with it. Some people will play Backjack even or the Dark Spirits. It's really fun to play with this card. And there's two copies of Muckracker. This used to be a um this used to be Dark the Dark Charmer. I either works honestly, but I prefer this because I don't have to rely on my opponents playing darks to make other stuff. Because you summon Muckracker, pitch a card, and can revive any fiend. No restrictions to what the fiend is, so. You can revive Link 2, you can revive Link 3, you can revive Link 4. It's really good in certain scenarios, and I love this card. It makes certain like plays way easier, because you can also, if you're stuck in the grind game where you don't have access to the Unchained Souls anymore, you can make this and revive one that you already linked away in the graveyard. Like, let's say you have one of these in graveyard, but no way to make another one from extra deck. You can make one of these instead, and then revive this one, which is really nice. After that, it's three copies of Anguish. Anguish is good. Um, if you banish all three unicorns, you can usually summon this, or you can summon this if you expect your opponent in the pop, so you can recur in the grind game. When it comes back to you, they have to answer it, because if it comes back to your turn, you leak summon with whatever they made. It's a really good card, and I feel it's undervalued a lot. This card is really nice as well. After that, there's three copies of Nightmare Unicorn. We play three because of Extravagance, but it's usually fine. You usually only need one. You can link it and immediately spin another thing the opponent has on their own turn. It's really good. Also, it's a fiend which comes up for certain floodgates like rivalry and stuff. And it's a dark which has some synergy depending on other floodgates. It's honestly quite nice because it being a dark fiend and matching with dog means you only lose to Tikiboo. And Tikiboo isn't too popular right now since the best decks don't really get affected by it too much. Then there's two copies of Unchained Abomination. This is one of the main end bosses. And it'll play two because it's not amazing to make, but it's really good to like finish off people. Again, simplified game state is great. And you can trigger it on the opponent's turn as well with other unchained cards like the trap card. Really nice card. I like it a lot. Then Top Logic Zero Boros. Um, you can make it as a finisher because like extravagance piles, um, opponent like tier builds banish a lot of cards. Even niche stuff like Sword Soul with um, Paw and Tri Sprite at least has some banish to so you, plusing off with like the attack of these amount. And you can trigger it really easily, so even if you lose a lot of your own resources, against decks like Tier, they lose infinitely more resources than you ever would, so it's totally worth it. And then Dean Gears, this doesn't come up too much, but it comes up a decent amount of times where I consider it's worth it. It can be any other thing, this is a flex spot really. But I like Dean Gears too because the destruction protection is nice, and you make it with any of the two level 8s, it can come up. And it's just non-targeting non-destruction removal, which also comes up a lot against Avermax and stuff like that, so I feel like it's really worth it. All right. Then after that, the side deck, three Dark Ruler. This is kind of following. This is kind of falling to the wayside, but I still think it's worth it. And where is my third Dark Ruler? I cannot find it. Oh, here it is. I'm a silly person. <laughs> this card is great. Um, against niche like road decks, it's amazing. Against the best decks right now, it's not too good, but I still think it's worth it because. It just getting rid of like even two interactions in this deck is enough to let you win the game sometimes. Like just stopping two pieces of interaction that will stop you in your tracks is great. Triple Cosmic for mine, other back row cards. You can use against Sword Soul for the blackout. You can use in tier for their traps and then plus off of their grave effects. You can use their field spell. It's good. Duster, it's there for fuck yeah turbo decks, like back row decks. I think it's a really good card, definitely worth it. This used to be reboot, but I feel this is an app replacement. Two copies of Grave Digger's Chapel. This is for tier, also for time. Oh, spicy. For tier. This card is great. It hits tier, it hits sprite in very niche interactions, it hits other decks, it hits math mix sometimes. This card is great though. I really think this is a slept on card, and I just picked up a third one, which I plan on fitting in here sometime. This card is amazing. 
So I just had three copies of the barrier. I'm eventually gonna swap this out since I feel like this is falling a little to the wayside, but just cutting off access to Kikalos or Gigantic Sprite is huge enough for I consider it worth it still. And again, against Bath Mech, you cut off access to like their Xyz monsters, which is great. And lastly, three evenly matched. The Equalizer card. This card is just evenly matched. It's great. Um, there aren't really that many. No replacements at all, really, for this card. It's super good. And I feel like if it resolves, you usually aren't in such a good position where you can just win the game on the spot. And that'll do it. Yeah, I really like this deck. I feel it's a little slept on. It's not amazing, but it definitely gets less credit than it should. I really like this deck, and I'm glad that I was able to, like, top an event with it. Even if it was, like, small, like, a locals. I'm just happy I was able to top an event. This deck is great. Alright, man. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.